Thank you. So Senate Government Operations coming back for a little break, a couple little breaks. Um, and we now have a draft 1.5, 1. 1, 1. I apologize, of JRS, JRH2. And it is on the committee page, it has been posted so anybody can follow along if they want. And <clears throat> so committee, I think that the thing we need to do is to start looking at it and see where we are and um, hopefully um, pass it out today. Yes, Senator Rahm. You wanna do questions clause by clause or? Yes, I think so. I think that that's the best way to do it so that we can answer any questions we have, make any changes we need to instead of going jumping around and going back and forth. Does that, is that okay with everybody? Yeah. If we do it that way? I assume yeah. you'd do it that way. Okay. So we didn't change the, the introduction or the, uh, at all. Madam Chair, if I may offer, I would be able to be happy to go clause by clause with you, tell you whether there's a change in, in a particular clause and what that change is, and then all of you in the committee can have your discussion on that clause. That's perfect. Thank you. And with that okay. understanding, I'm ready to begin whenever you are. We are ready. Very good. Then for the record, my name is Michael Chernick, and I am one of the legislative council staff attorneys and the drafter of this resolution. And the title remains the same as uh, Madam Chair indicated a moment ago, all the introductory language is the same as you saw yesterday, no change. The first new clause I did change last night and I alerted the chair to my concern that I wasn't sure where the 1906 date came from. I know we had discuss there were discussions in the house about 1906 and there was at one point a 1906 clause that was then deleted on the part of the members of the house general com uh, committee. Uh, I went through my materials through session law through the various historical articles through uh, Nancy Gallagher's book, and I just wasn't finding a specific 1906 reference. So I thought saying <clears throat> early 1900s effectively does the same thing. I think it's great. Okay. I think and it's well written, I think. And yep. then we had the discussion last night and this morning regarding uh, breed better men from the Scientific American articles, uh, Senator Rahm. And to be a mo I was chatting with one of the editors, to be a motto, it actually had, this was the association's motto per se, or the organization. And then I saw in the various emails that went back and forth this morning, a reminder, and it was sitting right in front of me of Nancy Gallagher's book. And it just seemed to be a good match. I, so it so, served the same purpose. Yeah, okay. I would just say we should we should say Breeding Better Vermonters by Nancy Gallagher. I just feel like it's not really fair to leave her, her authorship out. I, I'll do whatever you want. The reason I left it out was I didn't, I wasn't sure you wanted the name of an individual within the resolution, within the whereas clause, but that's your cause com uh, decision completely. It, it's unusual to do that, but. To do which one? one? I'll do. To add, to have people's names, I think. Yeah. Yeah however you want it. Is it normal to just put, cite a book without the author? I've gone both ways over the years. I just thought that my, the reason I did it the way I did is that the resolution is, it, well, there are a couple of other names concerning yeah. the governor and lieutenant governor, but since she's an author and not a historic figure, I wasn't sure what you wanted to do on that. If you want it in, I certainly can. I don't have strong feelings either way. I I have kind of strong feelings that, you know, she, I mean, her body of work came at a time when a lot of people weren't listening or paying attention to this part of our history. And she's, you know, she's one of the foremost experts and has, you know, really had to pull a lot of things together, starting at a time when we were not ready to have this conversation. And I feel like if we're going to cite her book, she deserves to be named. Then let's do it. I'm fine, fine with, with that. Yeah. Okay. Go for yep. it. 
I have so noted in my, and um, so noted. The next, <coughs> the next clause is basically as you suggested yesterday. I took the quotes out. Uh, again, okay. I had a discussion with editing and the editing was asking me, uh, what are you quoting? And I thought about it and I made, we, we discussed that these concepts in other clauses, but it's not a direct quote from anything. So I yep. pulled the quotes. The Fine. next clause, nope. yeah. I, uh, sorry, yeah. I think I'm gonna have a lot of little, little comments, but um, it's when, once you take that out, I feel like then we are, then the accuracy sort of falls to us to make sure we're accurately describing what the eugenics movement was. And it was elimination maybe and sterilization. It just, I mean, it, you know, if you just read that clause alone, it would seem like we were having like, you know, death squads or something. This was through the process of sterilizing people. So it just feels like elimination and sterilization would make sense. Eliminating. You want to change it to sterilization? Or what about el elimination through sterilization? That's fine. Yeah. Because I, I think Keisha's right. Otherwise, it sounds like you know you line them up. Death again. squads. Yeah. That's well. Cool. We probably did that too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and we started doing this way before 1900. Just saying. I don't think, and I don't think it was just through sterilization. I think that there were other methods of elimination here. I, I think that you could say elimination and sterilization, but not elimination through sterilization. Or because how about elimination including sterilization? Yep, that, that's why you're and paying. And Ron, would that work for you? That sounds good. That, that's why you're the professional here. Michael. <clears throat> okay. okay, going to the next, okay, so I had those two changes so far, and the first two clauses. The next clause is basically, as you gave it to me yesterday, except I corrected the names. Oh, okay. It's actually Al Governor Alan Fletcher. I went back, and I had his veto message, and the Attorney General was Rufus E. Brown. Okay. I went through my materials. Those are the right names. Because by that point, Governor Fletcher had succeeded Governor Weeks. Okay, perfect. So that was a historic correction. <clears throat> Are but we all okay with right that? Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, the next clause, I made two changes from what, well, three changes. One minor and two maybe a little bit larger. Uh, as was suggested to me yesterday, I added the word nevertheless right at the beginning because it seemed to connect better to say nevertheless after the bill had been vetoed, state agencies, institutions, et cetera. Uh, there was a better flow of continuity. Yep. So that's why I did. I like that. Uh, I capitalized the S on state because with our protocol, whenever we're dealing with the state of Vermont per se, we capitalize the S. And I also spoke of the vetoed legislation to be really clear about that. Yep. Yep. And that okay, so that I was curious. So, so even though, even though the governor vetoed it, we didn't override the veto. We didn't, we didn't reintroduce it. It the just Senate started. Did, the House did not. And okay. so we are, uh, both chambers don't override. There isn't an override. So that's okay. what happened. It was still vetoed. And it's listed, it's officially, I can tell you that I had the veto message and on the official list of vetoed legislation uh, and what it uh, became that the Secretary of State maintains, uh, it's listed as a, a legislation that the veto was upheld. Okay. I, I like the idea of following with, with after the veto, nevertheless, they carried out, they adopted policies and procedures to carry out the intent. Even though, yeah, I like that. That's that largely your phrase, uh, Senator White. I just made those two minor changes. Well, no. however minor you want to look at them. The next clause, the 1925 clause, is the same as you've seen before. There's no change there. Yep. Um, oh, go ahead. I've got a spelling mistake, I think, on line four. Isn't it zoology? 
Yes. That's how you spell it. It's so it weird. Is. That's spelled correctly. It's been okay. through spell checker and it's been through uh, wow. one of our senior editors. Where's Unless you want to put another O in there for a zoo. I know the O's is invisible. <laughs> I have a, if you like, just to satisfy everyone's concerns, I have a dictionary right in front of me. Oh, oh that's okay. That's I, cool. believe you. I believe you. <laughs> I think it would be the same with biology. You have bio. I mean, biology yeah. is. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a I have a sort of substantive thought about this section. I, I raised it early in our process, but Henry Perkins was the president of the American Eugenic Survey in 1927. He had influence nationally. And I just feel like it's important to note that because Vermont ended up being one of the intellectual powerhouses of this national eugenics movement that way. Ooh, that makes it even more insidious. I could add if you want, I could say uh, University of Zoology professor and president of the- I would, You could say established the Eugenic Survey of Vermont and later became president of the American Eugenic Survey. So what I could say then, give me just a half sec. In 1925, University of Vermont Zoology professor, Henry F. Perkins, who, okay, who is, Established, okay, we'll leave that. Establish the eugenic survey. But why don't we say who? I think we need the word who. To you could say who later became president of the American Eugenic Survey. Then and who yeah, later I think that's, became president. I think that's okay. the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And who later became. So leave it just like that, but after Vermont put who later became. Okay, and I have plenty of documentation on that. Thank you. You've got it. It's in there and I do, 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 do. And I put a big, a big asterisk in AES so I know what, what that means. And okay. I, I know what I, I have to ask the obvious, but was it later or was it, sim was it before? She I mean, said 1927. Well, oh, why don't we just, if I may suggest, why don't we say, and who is, and who served as president of the American Eugenics Survey? How does that work? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Well, avoid a question. Because <laughs> obviously he wasn't president his whole career, but at some point, so that takes care of that. And I have that and can do that. Next clause. This is probably the most controversial of the entire resolution. So let, we'll go over this. These state sanctioned policies primarily targeted individuals, families, and communities so far the same, whose heritage was French Canadian, French Indian, or other mixed ethnic or racial composition. I use both of those terms. If you want me to take one out, I will. But for the moment, I put them in. And here comes the more the point where, you're, where all of you will need to discuss. And persons whose extended families, successor generations, now identify either as Abenaki or as members of other indigenous bands or tribes. The one comment I will make is that they can't be their direct descendants because if they were subject to sterilization, there weren't any descendants. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they, they had fam they're you know, brothers and sisters, they're descendants of That's family. why I spoke of, well, it's a descendant is normally that direct line from parent to child to grandchild. And that's why I used extended family. Perfect. I have a just a couple of small corrections, or I don't know, thoughts I would put out there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, one is, um, I would say, whose heritage was documented as French Canadian, French Indian, or other mixed ethnic or racial composition. Oh. I feel like that articulates that that was just how they were noted in the record, not that they had to be that composition, because they may not have been mixed mixed ethnicity that was just how they were documented if they didn't want to be more specific or you know their their indigenous heritage and then the other thing i would just personally say it's a small point but successor generations now identify as abenaki or as members i don't know either feels yeah. weird to me there i put yeah. that in this morning it's as a connector it was yeah. time for transitional i can take it out 
I, I would take it out. If I may ask a question, Senator Rahm, uh, I guess documented is preferable over the word characterized as? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I leave that to you. I just suggested. Documented seems more historically accurate. They had roles and records, and that's what they wrote down. So characterized feels more like you're describing it to someone else, but documented feels okay. like right. Fine. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fine. So in that clause, I've added the documented whose heritage was documented, and then we've taken out the word item. Right. Yeah. The <laughs> next following clauses, uh, next five or six clauses anyway, are the same. Uh, you had eliminated one clause from the House version, but it was gone yesterday. And then page three is the same. And till you have that new clause at the very last whereas clause, the bottom of page three. That was a uh, wording that uh, Madam Chair, you suggested yesterday, and it's verbatim what you suggested. I didn't make any changes to it. Okay, anybody like that's lines 18 and 19 you're Correct. saying? You suggested that language yesterday, and I just plugged it in. No changes, no comma, not a, a pause, anything. <laughs> what you suggested. On to page four. Uh, I've now split this into two. And as I wrote, uh, Madam Chair, to you last evening, I made your additional whereas a resolve because it's an action statement and it made more sense as a resolve, but let's go over this again carefully. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly sincerely apologizes and expresses sorrow and regret to all individual Vermonters and their families and descendants who were harmed as a result of state sanctioned eugenics policies and practices. And that is the language that you had suggested yesterday, verbatim. Well, I think that that language I thought was in the House version, and that the it's close. second it's close. the second yeah. one was what I suggested, it's, but maybe not. Uh, no, actually, it is the same as the first. What you what you would be proposing is a different second, right? not the ethnocide genocide clause, but that the General Assembly should continue to work to eradicate the lasting legacy of its prior actions by listening to and working with the affected individuals and communities. And I did make a change and I want to explain why I did. You had should, uh, you had will, and one General Assembly can't bind another General Assembly. So I made it should. This was quite actually quite an issue in House General earlier in the winter. Generically speaking, you really can't say will in a resolution that a future legislature will yeah. do. But should you certainly can say. But Michael, that seems so contradictory. We create laws that we have to all abide by. Every future legislature has to abide That's by. That's in a statute, but you, this is a, that language effectively binds in a resolution, a legislature. You, you can't do that in a resolution. Yeah. Could no. you say, I know this could be like not good for a resolve clause, but could you say strives to? You could do that. Or will we'll strive, yeah. We'll strive. Or just take out the word should. And just it. it the and General Assembly continue to work. Continues, you mean in the past tense? In the present tense. It continues to work. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That, that, ans that answers the problem in time. Yeah. And that makes it active. Mm -hmm. It makes it active. You're not committing a future legislature, and yet you're expressing the same idea. Right. All very doable. So that does change. I don't know if anybody has comments about the second resolve that the House had, but it does eliminate the... Um, I think it's stronger about um, 
and the and I hadn't thought of this before until well I mean I should have thought of it before but when Rich was talking to us and he said when you're when you're looking at policies and procedures and laws you need to make sure you're listening to and working with the affected individuals and communities and so I put that in there and then that kind of removed this whole second part of that last resolve of the house which talked about um I, it, the, my print is so little I can hardly read it but do you want uh, me to read it to you madam chair I yeah can. Uh, that it's the very wrong if you read the second resolve from the House. Sure, I'm happy to. I have okay. it right here. Thank the you. The General Assembly recognizes that further legislative action should be taken to address the continuing impact of state-sanctioned eugenics policies and related practices of disenfranchisement, ethnocide, and genocide. I like ours way better. I actually but I also think this is a very strong ending, too. I mean, I. I Sorry. Could we have both? In, in, that's in what I was going to say. I mean, <laughs> why can't we have both? You, yeah. That's your call. I'm fine with that. I would I would end with this last resolve clause of theirs because it really is that's so strong. One. But leave in your second. I am, I'm hearing. So there'd be three. Yeah, three. that's totally fine. This you can have three resolves. There's, it's fine. We could have 10 resolves if we really wanted to. Yeah, and a policy <laughs> resolution, sure. So Michael, can I ask why it's drafted more like a bill than a resolution? It is drafted as a resolution. Oh. Uh, one of the things, well, well, two things. Number one, I mentioned to the chair last night, because this started in the house, it remains in the house font and format. You have different, there's, there are different uh, formats for resolutions that start in the house and start in the Senate. But oh. once a house resolution goes to the Senate, it keeps the house format. Similarly, when a Senate resolution goes over to the house, it keeps the, the Senate format. Okay. But it's, it's drafted as a bill, as a resolution. It's, you have an opening here because you're amending it. And actually, the, the lead-in language is a little bit different than for a bill. We've been working on that, and this is the language that we've basically come up with in Ledge Council for when we're amending a, re a policy resolution. So when, you, when it comes to us to be voted on by the Senate, it will look like this, but there will be more cross-offs yeah. than our language underneath it. Correct. Yeah. Senator Colomar, it may look like a bill to you because it does have that introduction. Yeah, that was just a curiosity. Nothing else. No, no, no. Sure, that, that's the answer. <laughs> okay, committee, where are we? We're pretty good. Yeah. I, th I think we're ready, almost ready to vote it out. Madam Chair, may I read through what all your corrections are one more time so there's no misunderstanding? Yep. It would give me a greater sense of security. Yep, sure. But they're not that long. Okay. Yep. In the first row, where, uh, whereas clause, uh, after better Vermonters, I'm going to add in by Nancy L. Gallagher. Uh, yeah. reported, uh, and then after elimination, including sterilization. Do you want me to say including through sterilization or including? No. Including not sterilization. Through. Okay. So we have that. Uh, going on to page two, the next thing that I have is after eugenics survey of Vermont and who served as president, or we left the who out, I think, in the end. No, and who, that's right. And who served as president of the American Eugenics Survey. Correct? Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm asking folks to reconfirm yes. for me. Yep. Okay. Uh, on the next clause, we're going to whose heritage was documented as French Canadian, et cetera, et cetera. 
I'm going to go, I'm going to make one more comment here that I, I kind of missed. Um, it says to collect uh, evidence and for, of uh, delinquency, dependency and deficiency. But I think that we very clearly heard that um, in addition to the uh, policies aimed at, targeted at um, French, th these, these groups of people, it, it also really targeted um, those who were poor, mentally ill and disabled. And I, I know that we talk he up here about the, the dependent, the defective and the delinquent, but I, I would like a separate whereas before this one with the um, groups of people that just says, whereas it targeted the poor, mentally ill and disabled to be very, very specific that that was, they weren't just kind of an afterthought. They really were targeted as well as these group communities of people. Yeah. Absolutely. Would you consider putting them all in? Do you want to keep that? You, in the next clause, you're saying primarily targeted. Would you consider putting that into that clause or else? No, I think two, I think it needs to be two separate that they, because they targeted these groups of people, but then they specifically targeted families and communities of these groups of people. So I, in my mind, they're two separate thoughts. Yep. And we want all the poor people gone and we're just going to get rid of poor people and disabled people, but we are going to, we are going to target these families and communities. Yeah, I have two questions then. Yep. At first, what do you want me to say? Uh, the poor is one of them? Yeah, and whereas these state sanctioned policies targeted the poor, mentally ill oh, and want, disabled. Do you want both of them to say these state sanctioned policies targeted? Yeah. I don't think there's any harm in repeating that, but if you might add an also in somewhere, um, maybe in that second, whereas okay, let me let me get the first one done first. Yep. These state targeted, and then what are the groups that you want meant poor. Mentally ill and disabled. So, Those, so people with disabilities. People with yeah. disabilities. Okay. Do we want to say mentally ill or persons with mental and physical disabilities? Susan's here in case she had some thoughts on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, Susan is here. What, Susan, what would you say? She might have stepped I'm away. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, thanks for the question. People generally like people first language. And so if you said people with um, physical and mental disabilities, I think that pretty much captures um, the developmentally disabled, psychiatric disabilities, um, and people with physical disabilities. Um, but I, as Senator Polina was right, catching the people first language. Um, it's definitely- That's because he was the founder of our respectful language bill. <laughs> Yes. How about persons, since they're technically, how about persons with mental and physical disabilities? I think that's fine too, or Vermonters or residents or other possible terms. I don't you want to say Vermonters. I, I, I don't care at all, as long as we have it in there. I don't care what the modifier Vermonters is. Vermonters with mental and physical disabilities. Yeah, so we have the poor and then the poor, yeah. Okay. Keisha? The poor and yeah. Senator Rahm, you have a So I'm um, I'm really I'm really not trying to fatigue people here. But the you can sterilize both men and women, and the largest group sterilized were women. So I mean, first and foremost, eugenics targeted women. So it just feels like now they're kind of left out even though about two-thirds to 70 percent of those targeted were women i um, here's my feeling on that i think that um 
that, that, that women were not necessarily targeted. Who was targeted were poor people, people with a physical and mental disabilities, and these groups of people. So yeah. they were the ones that were targeted. The result was that there were many women who were sterilized, yeah. but they weren't yeah. targeted. Be that was the way of getting at these, these other people that were trying to be eliminated. You don't, they didn't target women because if we said they targeted women, that would also mean the women as Judy uh, pointed out that lived on the hill. So they weren't, women were not targeted. Right. If you, I mean, if you ever read some of the, like NPR has done a lot of national pieces on eugenics. I don't know if people have heard those and they, they often did target women, you know, they were really kind of focused on women that they thought were troublemakers or were, you know, talking back or, or sleeping around town. Like they were really quite focused on women, but not, well, they were, those were the defectives. Yeah. Well, but also none of our witnesses have actually asked us to specifically call out women. I think we're calling out everybody who was affected. I, I mean, we do we have his, I mean, Judy, who's our grounded in this. I mean, no one's asked us to specifically call out w women. I mean, is there, I mean, we, we it's everybody who was affected. It's, it's bad all the way around. I, I don't I don't know I don't have a strong feeling about it but I do I think that by saying women and were women were targeted that we're yeah losing I, I don't, men were targeted to, I mean I don't well, think communities we have to, were targeted and right groups of people were targeted I mean types, types of people were types right there yeah. are there there are statistics out there I don't know if it's I can't remember if it's specific to Vermont about how many what proportion of people sterilized were women. Of course, it's going to be more be a separate because... clause than targeting. But I don't know about of course. Like I feel like it needs to be said because you men were sterilized. You can sterilize both types yeah. of women were sterilized in much greater numbers. I don't know well, how. Do you have a suggestion about how we would do that, ma'am, Madam Chair? Yes. Could we go back? Okay. to the first, second, third clause. This movement targeted for elimination, Bruce, uh, elim uh, for elim uh, targeted for elimination. Well, I think they're going to say elimination or sterilization, especially of women. How would that work? That's a lot of, that's a, I'm looking at language around the country and it says, these are the groups that were targeted and it especially impacted women. Um, it, it, a lot of them are saying women of color, but that was, you know, where it would be addressed that with the indigenous piece here. Um, an idea for so you. how about if you said this movement targeted for elimination including through sterilization thus dramatically impacting women so it impacted the women it didn't right it they're impacted. all yeah it, that's what they're all saying it's it, it that meant it had a disproportionate impact on women how I mean, yeah you know that's something you carry differently when you were how would it be if i wrote it including sterilization that dramatically that Dramatically doesn't seem to be right. That well, primarily impacted women. Oh, okay. Disproportionately or pri primarily. So. Yeah, don't Not use disproportionately. The word disproportionately. How's that? I hate that word. Okay, oh. Jeanette hates. Just, hates <laughs> no, we've just used it so much that I think it's sure. lost any, any meaning. Primarily impacted women. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, it, it impacted all those people. I mean, did it primarily? In, I mean, does the data? The data that I remember seeing from looking over all the documentation in terms of sterilizations, they were at least documented. I'm not saying this is what happened, but the documentation I saw seemed to indicate that there were more fem far more female sterilizations than male sterilizations. Oh, least. I'm sure. Oh, it had had to be. So it, it okay. Whatever you want. 
Great. I'm fi I'm fine with that. Either one. I'm putting it there instead of a separate whereas. They're primarily impacted. Okay. With that being said, the second clause, oh. and I, I've noted just for the record again, that you're eliminating the word either just before his Abenaki. But getting back up to the top of the, of the clause, do you, since we now have this new, these state sanctioned policies targeted, that maybe you could say these policies also targeted or- Yeah, I would say that instead of primarily, I would- Yeah, these say also targeted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll leave the state sanctioned in as an, a point of emphasis. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the clause before that, Michael? The new clause before that, Senator, which is only in my scribble for the moment, these state sanctioned policies targeted the poor and Vermonters with mental and physical disabilities. Perfect. Thank you. So I was taking the primarily out of the second because I didn't think you wanted to weigh one higher than the other. Putting also in, yep. Good. Okay. And the only other change, if I, well, two other changes that you were asked for uh, in the original second resolve clause. I'm taking out the word should and I'm making the word continues in the plural to bring it into the present tense. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'm, I'm adding verbatim the original final house resolve, the one that has gen genocide and ethnocide in it. I'm fine with that. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, Committee and Michael, here's the question. Do we want to um, give some time here for a final um, version to be put before us and then we can vote on it? Yeah, that's a good idea. Given, yeah. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I may, given that this is a policy resolution of extraordinary sensitivity and importance, I would feel much better that the elected legislators saw the absolutely final version versus a legislative attorney saw the final version before it goes into the before it's introduced uh, goes to the calendar rather. Sounds perfect. So how much time should we allow here? Given the pressure that our stretch staff is on in terms of editing, it would really be helpful if I could have the night. Oh sure. Um, okay. And then we, we can, can post it tomorrow. Vote it tomorrow. It, yeah, I was. And because part of the issue, Senator White, is yeah. that there are a couple of instances where I have new statements of fact that I know I have all the documentation, but I need to pull it out of my file and give it to the editor to put it all together. Okay. And I feel um, much more comfortable if we had overnight. So what I would suggest is that we do that and then we um, vote it out first thing tomorrow and send it to um, House General so that they can, and everybody else so that they can look at it and even begin their um, deliberations on whether they're gonna agree or ask for conference committee or whatever. Okay. So that even before we pass it out of the, the Senate, and then I would ask um, um, that we do the same thing and ask for it to be um, put in all stages of passage so that we can get it over to them. And I also, at this point, would like to ask if um, Senator Collimore would report this. Sure. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Well, Michael, if you can get the yes, absolute Senator. final um, version, we could actually post it today. That was my point why I was making that. If you wanted a work version for yourselves, obviously I could turn that around very quickly. But in terms of a clean, edited. final, edited okay. version, 
right. I've already pushed editing, I think, for one day to its limit okay. in terms of making changes with other things going on. Yeah. I'd rather not push editing any further for this afternoon if I possibly could not. Okay. But if it had the night, it would definitely be appreciated in the edit by the editors. All right. That's fine. We have to be very careful about pushing our staff. So I appreciate that. It's not a matter of my simply writing it and getting it down there. They have to go over it with a fine tooth comb one more time, yep. the new language. Understood. And I've already asked them for quite a lot this afternoon. Okay, so are we set with that? So yep. what time tomorrow, Madam Chair, would you be meeting on this? One o'clock. Try to get this to you no later than noon. How's that? Sounds perfect. And okay, I think that's, um, I am gonna ask um, the rules committee to release one more uh, charter change. It's a relatively simple charter change um, allowing the water district of Wilmington to merge with the, the town of Wilmington. And they would like to be able to do it now. You know, I instead noticed, of waiting for a year. I noticed there were a couple others. Burlington had one, Springfield had one, but they never came across. Thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, I, I think the only two that are in rules right now are um, Wilmington and Brattleboro, and we're not gonna have time to right. look at Brattleboro this year. Just. Okay. But I, I did go back through the House GovOps stuff. Yeah. There was a Springfield charter change, a Burlington uh, charter change. They must just not have ever taken them up. Well, what I'll do is ask for a rules committee meeting um, right after the floor tomorrow. And if there are any other, if they've sent over any other charters, okay. we can ask for them. And then tomorrow, after, when we're finished with this, we'll just look at those charters. Does yep. that make sense? Yep so that we can just get them off our plate. So we, we should be pretty good for next week. And I don't know if we want to, um, we don't have, I would like us if we, if you all have the uh, stamina to continue, there's two issues that I know they're not gonna be uh, finished this year at all, but there are two issues that I, want to keep us um, kind of moving on. And I don't know if one is the agency of public safety. I don't know where we are with that. And the other is the ethic code of ethics. Yes, we, we've sort of, we had to drop those quickly to deal with pensions. So we, we yeah, uh, and it would be and so I don't know if you up. have the stamina to start to uh, maybe take up the, um, I'm trying to uh, work with, um, the commissioner and a bunch of other people around the um, with around the uh, agency of public safety because it's clearly not going to happen this year anyway, and just kind of try and get it into a good um, good position for so that we can act quickly in January one way or the other. But the code of ethics, do we have the stamina to to yeah. start to take that up next Tuesday? As Gail had a thought though, maybe okay, not. Gail. Influence. Well, it's not necessarily a thought. I was just wondering about 122. Isn't that still out there? What is 122? What's that? I think it's boards and commissions, right? Oh, right. We still have to conclude our work on H122 or whatever. Oh, um, yeah. What did we? We, we never finished it. That was the Board of Education thing? No, we no? we dropped that because um, education that? never got back to us and then they said they were going to deal with it in another way, but it was the Climate Council. Oh, that's right, the per diems. Okay, so I let's... I decided to just leave them alone. Weren't there, weren't there other things in that, Bill? That what, we what, did? Yeah, that your boards and commissions, wasn't there more in that, Bill, I thought? Well, there's more in the bill, still, yeah. but not that we did. Right. I think the only thing we were going to do was do the thing with the State Board of Education. Right. And, 
and uh, Senate Ed didn't want to do anything? They said that they were going to have a different way of dealing with it. So, and then there was the climate change per diems, which we haven't resolved. Okay, so we should do that tomorrow and get that out of the way. And so I, what order are we going to tackle these in? Let's do the resolution first. Okay. Oh, oh no. We, it might give uh, Michael a little more time. You know, Jeanette, the board, the board bill also included that man, emergency management stuff. That was the oh, thing. Oh, right. Wellness. Right. The wellness. Oh, yeah. The emergency right. management districts right. or whatever they're called. Oh, I completely Erica, forgot that. Yeah. Erica Bornman's part. Yeah. I, that seemed so non-controversial to me that I didn't even. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's hard to get worked um, up over it. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's do 122 first. And then any charters? And then um, and then the resolution. Madam Chair. Yeah. When we are done or sort of resolved as much as we can other things, does it make sense for us to be briefed in any way on the state house kind of reopening plan or I don't know if that because I know before you had thought about what some kind of commission so I just didn't know if that relates to us at all well you know I I sent then the uh, suggestion to appropriations and she said that um the the joint management legislative committee or whoever they are I don't know who's on there the Joint is, Legislative Management Committee. And I don't know who that is, but that that they're, is, do, they're the doing Senate, it. For the Senate, it's Becca, Dick Mazza, Jane Kitchell, and Joe Benning. Okay. So there's four and four, is that what it is? Yep. And that they are actually doing it. So it's the same, it's exactly the same that I was proposing, except they already have it set up. But we should, and I have no idea where they are. Um, I know that um, the pro tem said that um, she briefed us a little bit on it. She, I think that was at a chair's meeting. Yeah, or in caucus, in the Tuesday caucus. Oh, yeah. I don't. Um, oh, yes, because she said, look at that study but that study is not the final word that's just some suggestions and people were getting exercised we got about... emailed that study this afternoon too oh we did did carolyn send it to us yeah gail gail has yeah as far as tomorrow goes amarin's not available until 1 30 and then she's unavailable after 2 30 and tucker is not available at 1.30. His only availability is from, let's see. Um, this thing's so hard to read. It's like 1.30 to 2. He's available from 1.30 to 2? Yeah, let me, let me open this up. It's too hard to tell in this chart. Okay, he's in Senate Finance until 145. And then he is doing something else at 215. So 145 to 215. That'll work. And Amarin is available from 130 to when? From 130 to 230. Oh. <laughs> No, that's not going to work. Okay, it's one fifteen to two thirty. That she's available. Yeah. Or that she's not available. Oh, she is available. Yeah. So, so let's at one at one fifteen. Okay. Let's do H one twenty two because that's when we need her, right? Yep. yep. And then um, at one forty five, that'll give us half an hour on that. At one forty five. Let's do um, 
Underhill at two o'clock Williston and at 2.15, oh no, he's leaving us at 2.15? Uh, yes. Okay, so we'll do Underhill and Williston. And we'll just, we don't have Wilmington yet anyway, so we'll do those two. And then at 2.15, we'll do the um, resolution. Okay, so 15 minutes is enough for two charters? Yeah. No, I have 145 to two oh. Underhill and two to 215. So if we start at 145, that only gives us half an hour to talk about 122. Is that enough time? No, <clears throat> we're gonna do, um, Oh yeah, if we do one from 115 to 145. Okay. We'll do H122, that gives us half an hour on that. That should be enough, right? Yeah. And then at 145, we'll do Underhill. Okay. And at two o'clock, we'll do Williston. Okay. And then Tucker will leave us and Michael will join us That's and we'll do the resolution. And then, and then next week we can schedule some time. I did get a note from Larry Nobins and we'll schedule some time for, um, to, to continue our conversation about the ethics, the code of ethics. And I know we're not gonna get it done, but I'd like us to not completely drop it this year if, po if there's any possibility of us doing something next week. Yeah, and we've pushed him out the door twice. So I, I agree, I think that would be a good, good signal to uh, him that we still are interested. And for what it's for what it's worth, we passed out of the committee a bill that um, changed some technical changes around the Ethics Commission, which I think sent to the, got sent to the Finance Committee. No, I think it got sent to Appropriations. Well, it got sent somewhere. Half time. So no, we should... there was no appropriation needed, though, because they already had the money. We were just but authorized they have to approve to... the position. Right, right. So let, I'll send Jane a note right now. That was um, 135, I think. I'll double check for you. And Gail, if you want to, you can ask if the um, reporters from Underhill and Williston want to come in. Okay. Just. And if they do, that's fine. And if they don't. All right. Um, I think it was 135, wasn't it, Brian? It's H-135 and it was referred to finance oh. on April 14th for rule 31. And there's no action after that. Why would, why would it have gone to finance? I don't know, but that's what the, uh, Okay, I will check with them to find out where it is. It's actually, I, I had a conversation with Amarin a little while ago, and she said that I said, Why is it in finance? And Amarin said, I don't know. She said she got a call from the staff person in finance who asked Amarin why it got sent to finance. And Amarin said, I don't know why it got sent to finance. It, so it may, it may be, God forbid, have been a mistake. I'm trying to remember if there was anything relative to finance in there. I don't remember without seeing it in front of me. I don't what, think so. You think Ann would have said, why is this here? And I mean, it's almost a month ago. I don't think she's had time to probably look at them all. Okay, okay right. I'm going to send a note to Ann and Jane and Bloomer and ask, and Becca, and ask them to clear this up and get it to us so we can get it passed. Okay. Sure, because mostly it has to do with like doing disclosure statements and stuff like that. It was not very controversial at all. Right, right. Okay.